Hello and welcome to another video on the Powered Armoured Exoskeleton Project. It's finally time to actually go over how I'm going to sense movement of the operator to allow the actuators to work and make this suit of armour actually into power armour. Now I've trialled some various different versions over the years on how to do this, but I think I've finally come up with the answer, so we'll go over some of those early versions and then go on to the version we're actually going to be using for this next and hopefully final prototype. And while we're here, please like, subscribe, that way you won't miss any updates on the project in the future. And here is one of the early versions that proved the concept of what we were using. This, as you can see, has a stepper motor on. These are pretty good for trialing these things out because they naturally hold a lock position and can be quite easily used with stepper drivers and Arduino. The negative of these, of course, is they don't rotate that fast. They lose torque with the higher speed that they go, and in general, they're quite bulky. So while this worked for this test piece, they're not really suitable for the suit at large, mainly because to get a stepper motor strong enough, powerful enough to do the task, it would actually stick about six inches out. But it did prove the mechanism in question, which I'll try to explain as well as possible. So what we've got is we've got this bracket here, which is actually a floating bracket onto the other ones. Where the shaft for the stepper motor is, you'd naturally have another bracket attaching to the rest of the exoskeleton. This bracket then has a center that runs through onto the inside, onto this plastic bracket you can see here, which if we take this off, you can see this bracket pulls off, and then we've got that center attaching to the floating bracket. And then this outer ring here and here is actually attached to this middle piece of aluminium that is attached to the stepper motor. The idea of this is the exoskeleton attaches to the floating bracket while the stepper motor attaches to this outer ring and then in between those brackets you have a sensor in that gap. That sensor being a force resistance sensor like this one you have here. These work by once you apply pressure onto this little pad it changed the resistance of the sensor and you can use that to command your component. These are pretty good, cheap, easily accessible, quite easy to program in. The negative is, is they are quite weak and finicky, so you have got to be careful with them, but it's the best thing to use that I've found so far. So the idea is that when you apply pressure against the exoskeleton, it'll move this floating plate. That'll then start to apply pressure internally and just move the plate ever so slightly against the force resistance sensor that's mounted into there, pressing it up, applying the sensor, changing the resistance, which is also proportional. That is then fed into a processor that activates the stepper motor and moves it up in the direction of travel that you want. As soon as you stop applying pressure, it then the sensor then goes to zero. The stepper motor then stops and holds position. Because the stepper motor holds position, that is what essentially provides you something to press against. Hope that makes sense. It is quite hard to describe in a video, to be honest, but the design changes from this quite a bit, so hopefully it'll make more sense. The issue with this design is, as you can see, it's quite bulky. There's a lot of parts involved. It would heavily bulk up the exoskeleton more than I'd like. You obviously have the stepper motor that isn't good enough. So I did then try to slim this design down as the idea and theory it did work. So we've got this version here. This actually doesn't have FSR sensors, force resistance sensors, but it works in a similar manner. You can see how it goes up and down and that's how you apply the force. This I did actually try with regular limit switches. The problem with is with that, well, you obviously don't get a proportional value to it. It also has to move a bit too much really. And I don't think it'd work that well. I did manage to slim the whole design down and make it so you could use a quasi-direct drive robotic actuator on it. And this, while being just made out of plastic, is all sized so it could be made out of carbon fibre and be stiff enough and thick enough to work. However, as you can see, this is still too bulky, there's still too many parts involved. And what I'd really like with this is no extra wires running out of the back. I really want to just be able to build an actuator that has all of these components in built into one, so all you have is power wires coming out of the side of it, making it much easier to replace in-field and less likely to get damaged. Now, I've been developing my own actuator for a while with many different versions, like kind of the core that you can see here. So I want to get this sensor system built into something like this. This not being the final version, but for that final version, I want all of this crammed into just something this size. 
what we have here in this little test stand is we've got a potential motor core again yet to be finished in a future video but you can see we've got two force resistance sensors near the middle that basically slot through the center of the actuator and come out of the other side the idea of this is that you have this part in basically two pieces this being the other piece you'll have this center shaft running through it and then we've got this piece here that slots over the top like so there's the slightest bit of movement left and right on this that means that when you move in the exoskeleton as you just start to apply pressure you'll apply pressure onto that force resistance sensor change the value and start activating the motor this is basically how power steering works on electric power steering on a steering column these will require a little bit of tuning to make sure they're right to make sure that proportional value equals proportional power so that it all works smoothly and isn't jittery this was originally the problem with electric power steering of course that's now been solved and it's as smooth as you like however another problem that i want to solve is that i don't want any complicated electronics on this i don't want any electronics that can be easily interfered with with electronic warfare electronic countermeasures all the rest of it you can, of course, protect electronics at least to a degree with different filters and everything, but that isn't something that I'm going to be able to develop easily. I'd have to run something like this off of things like Arduinos. As we're in this drone-heavy world, the way that I think things are going to go military-wise is you're either going to be going full digital or you're going to have basically dead zones where everything has electronic warfare applied to it. That is going to knock out any serious electronics, any complex electronics. So I basically want this to be like chip and processor free and for the suit in general to be like that apart from a compartment that can be heavily hardened that houses all of the electronics. So I want to be able to get this to work with very minimal electronics to reduce that interference. Which I do believe I've got a way to do that. And here is my ultra simple solution to the complicated electronics. So we've got the force resistance sensors running through the center of the car, like we've seen, down onto this little breadboard. We've got two resistors to make sure the pins aren't floating. And then we have two MOSFETs with the gates being opened by the force resistance sensors. While MOSFETs, I think, are normally used on and off, they do actually vary input and output voltage if you vary the gate voltage a little bit. This will take some tuning because it doesn't vary it that much. But we've got this little motor hooked up so I can demonstrate it here. So if I just rotate these a little bit or more to the point, apply pressure either way. Got one way, the other way. And then if I do it real gentle, you can see you can vary the input voltage depending on how hard it's pressed. Again, it really doesn't take much force, so the voltage will have to be quite heavily tuned, but it does work. I'll be able to reduce the tolerance of this end right down so it's as sensitive as humanly possible. That'll also help tuning in the MOSFET side and the general voltage inputs. Now, as this isn't going to be a stepper motor, you can imagine it's not going to lock position, so there needs to be something acting against it to basically hold this in whatever position you're in, ideally with no energy applied, so that you can actually just apply pressure on the exoskeleton for this part to activate the motor left or right. And for that, I'm gonna have a metal washer on the back of here. That's if any of the silicon steel or SMC composites aren't exposed. And then on the back plate for the actuator, there's gonna be a couple of magnets. That will apply some magnetic drag to the core of the actuator and allow for that difference to be sensed in pressure from this being lightly held and the exoskeleton moving. The only challenge I've now got is to make sure that I can fit all of these pieces nicely either into the central core of this or onto the back plate of the actuator, probably on the back plate. But that way I will just be able to have two power wires sticking out of the bottom of this 
making the actuator and the sensor system all built in, making it easy to be changed on the exoskeleton as wanted. With the sensor system roughly sorted, in the next video, we'll be going over the real core of the motor and how I'm gonna get that to work and what roughly my final design is. And when that part of the actuator is complete and the whole thing is done, we are getting ever closer to finishing the powered armored exoskeleton project. So we've got some armor to finish alongside, some bits to finish, a helmet to make, and an exoskeleton that I just want to reinforce a couple of pieces on. Things we've covered in the previous videos, which if you're new to the channel, there's a whole series on this project if you're interested. And if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, as I thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. And last of all, I hope you have a great day.